Hi, welcome. This is the JCS Computer Science Channel. My name is Coder J. This will be the start of an algorithms course using Python. In this section, we'll be taking a look at big O notation. Python will be used for the implementation for most of the algorithms in this course. However, big O notation stands in logic within its own right, as we might know. Python is a language alongside any language to implement these algorithms. So in this course, utilizing blocks, the playlist itself represents those blocks well in the course itself within its own right. So YouTube continues to be a very good platform for presenting material and subject matter like the industry of computer science. So I'm a hardcore believer in breaking the material down into small pieces. And according to my virtual school of thought, which is essentially what this channel is, breaking the subject matter down one block at a time is essential. So through this channel, you will find and should find the necessary knowledge that you're looking for in this subject matter. So in my opinion, and from the bias of our computer science channel, we will continue in that direction. So expect comprehensive repetition through algorithms, programming and code on this channel. Okay, so expect heavy repetition. I'm a firm believer in that. You cannot do something too many times. You cannot build a linked list too many times. So you're going to see that heavy pattern of iteration as you take the journey on this channel. So my name is Coder J. To support the channel, there's a home page that you can visit, the home page of this channel. And there are various ways to support the channel. There are uh, different ways that you can do that. So let's get started. This is an algorithms course using Python. Now I say a, not the or the only. This is a course, a one of the courses or an algorithms course using Python, which means there will be more of these courses that you can uh, sift through and work through on this channel. Okay, again, we cannot build a linked list so many times. We cannot build it too many times. We'll see a linked list again. All right, so I want to get into the thought process that we can really you know, work through the material and increase um, learning capacity. So the first thing we want to look at here is a thing called asymptotic analysis. So asymptotic analysis is a method used to evaluate the performance of algorithm in terms of its input size. So it will help us understand how the algorithm behaves as the input size approaches infinity. So the goal is to understand the growth rate of the algorithm's time or space requirements. Uh, so on the homepage, you'll, you know, see a little bit about me or hear, hear a little bit about my background. So I've, you know, I've been a programmer for uh, many years, and that's been where I've been. Uh, kind of in the coding community. So I come from the coding community. Uh, this is an, a computer science algorithms channel. So on this channel, I'll be uh, teaching and uh, supplying as much information as I can to help increase knowledge in this subject area, okay? So continuing on, there are common you know, notations and 
asymptotic analysis, like uh, big O notation, omega, theta. We're going to be dealing with the big O right now. Uh, the notation here represents the upper bound of an algorithm's time complexity. Time complexity. So it describes the worst case scenario of an algorithm's runtime in terms of emphasize and ignoring lower order terms and constants. So we're, we'll look into that. Now, I'm going to talk about some of the time complexities as we will be dealing with time and space for efficiency. Uh, so we have big O of 1, big O of log n, big O of n, O of n log n, O of n squared. So we'll look into that here in a second. But first, I, I want to talk about some tools that you guys can use, simply uh, the editor. So the editor that I will be using when we get to the programming part of these uh, courses is replit.com. I'll be working out of creating REPLs and We'll be dealing with uh, Python REPLs, C++ REPLs, and so on. Again, this is ongoing. This channel promotes ongoing uh, iterative, iterative uh, cyclical approach uh, to the material. So there's never going to be, you know, uh, any, this feeling that, you know, we did something and then that's it, right? So there's always going to be something to do. Right? There's always going to be something to iterate through. Uh, so the course is designed to be this contiguous, uh, ongoing learning, continuous learning. Um, and uh, so this is the editor that I'll be using if, you know, you, uh, if you're not as technical, uh, if you join the channel, you're not as technical as, as you should be. Uh, if you're a beginner, then this is a good place to start creating. So you can go in there. I'll show that too as well here in a minute. You can go into Replit and pull down REPLs of different languages, specifically uh, Python, and for this type of course here, then this channel that, we're, that you're that you're on. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's really all you need. I'll be using uh, Paint for demonstration. Uh, all you need is uh, to just learn the logic and work through the code uh, for the most part uh, when you're dealing with these courses on this channel. So uh, to continue on here, I'll be working off of the virtual Blackboard um, and demonstrating logic uh, as we work through algorithms, right? So the purpose of this channel and as we work through as many courses as we can, which is basically uh, uh, literally as many as we can. And there's really no uh, limit to what we can learn here. So we're going to stay with computer science. The channel is built for that. So you've come to the right places if that's what you're looking for. So the first thing that we need to talk about here and continue to work through is Big O. And you know, we have big O is a mathematical notation, right? Um, that will deal with time complexity and space for the efficiency of our algorithms, right? So we're going to now analyze that, right? As we move along, it's all about, you know, analyzing the logic, the efficiency of these algorithms and how the performance scales with the input size that we uh, are going to talk about. So the O is order of, right, order of one. And it's used to signify that the, that the following expression describes the asymptotic behavior of a function, right? So that's a function and a scenario where a function or, or a curve on the chart approaches but never actually reaches a particular point or limit. So we're going to, you know, dive into this right here uh, as we start this discourse, right? This is a course in 
algorithms using Python as a as a language. So we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to the, Py the Python soon. So O of one is constant time complexity. A big O, right? So I'm somebody who uh, works in the computer lab. Uh, uh, so I'm, you know, in the admin building there, and you can find in my room there. You know, it's got a coder J on the on the door, and I work right next to my colleague Mouse, who will, you know, be a guest on the channel uh, every so often. And you know, I'm in in the uh, computer lab, and you know, Mouse is talking to the boss, and you know, and and uh, big O comes up, big O comes up in what the next implementation is and, and how we should you know, implement something for efficiency. Right? So it comes up a lot. It's very, this is an important concept and should it be painful? It shouldn't have to be. So O of one, constant time complexity. So this means that the algorithm's runtime or space usage is constant, doesn't change. No matter you know how much the size how you know how much the size is of the input of the data, okay. So that size could be anything and re remain constant. So an example of that. So if you see this, whether you know in your workspace or in, in where you are trying to work through in the industry of computer science. Accessing, right? If we access an element in an array by index, that is something that O of one constant time complexity would map to. Uh, for loop, for example, into a collection, we can set a variable of i and index into it. It doesn't matter how large the array is. Accessing an element will always take the same amount of time and space here. So O of one constant time. Okay, big O notation. Now the next time complexity that I want to talk about is this one. Linear time complexity, I believe, is what that is, okay, and, and it is. So uh, this indicates that the algorithm's performance grows linearly with the size of the input data. So if you iterate through an array to find the specific element, right, as the size of the array grows, the time taken to find the element increases proportionally. So if you increase the array, you add an element to it, you append something to it, then, you know, we're taking O of N linear time here. And that might be okay for some, uh, for some situations. O of N squared would be next. Quadratic time complexity is that one. So the algorithm's, algorithm's performance is proportional to the square of the size of the input data. This would be nested loops. So you iterate through each loop over the entire input. As the input size grows, the runtime increases quadratically. Um, it's a little bit slower, uh, but I believe that could work uh, for some of you. Uh, o of log n would be next. Logarithmic time complexity, all right, like that. This signifies, right, that we're growing logarithm logarithmically with the size of the input data. So a perfect example of that is some kind of search space that is had, right? leading to a growth in time complexity. That's binary search, for example. 
we'll get the binary search and look more into that. Uh, once or more than once. You remember what I talked about with heavy repetition through the material. Yeah. So there's no, you know, you know, there's no hard, fast rule. You know, we can't do binary, binary search too many times. Um, if you see that I'm doing binary search too many times, there's a method to the madness. Now, O of n log n, logarithmic time complexity, um, was log n, and linear arithmetic time complexity is n log n, from what I just uh, actually just mentioned. Okay. Uh, so this describes an algorithm whose performance is the product of a linear factor. Merge sort, quick sort, will be perfect examples of how we are taking a linear factor and bringing it together with a logarithmic factor that is merging and and, uh, and quick sort uh, has a similar type of logic to it as well. And then we have ex exponential time complexity, uh, big O of two to the power of N. So this one here, is the big O of two to the power of N which means that we can use brute force algorithms that try all possible combinations so as the input size grows the number of combinations grow exponentially so that could, could promote some you know uh, could be less efficient at times right so the, the big O notation, again, is a mathematical notation that describes limiting behavior of a function when the argument approaches a particular value. Okay, so we're analyzing for the efficiency of algorithms in time and space. So we'll come back to this concept uh, more than once, break it down some more. Okay, and try to apply these to code uh, so we can be, you know, as efficient as possible in time and space.